So I actually want to go back to the behavioral science element. What is it good for and what is it terrible at? That's a dangerous question. There is actually a huge debate out there about behavioral science. Like everything, it has a golden age and then it failed and now it's like rebuilding reputation or something. There is a big crisis in psychology, which is called replication crisis. Many classic experiments, most of you probably know, just because they are so popular that it became pop culture, like uh, Stanley Milligram giving electric shocks to people yeah. or uh, Zimbabwe with the turning students into basically Nazis just because he gave them orders. For many, many classics. We couldn't replicate. The Stanford. Yeah, the Stanford experiment. Basically opened the old foundations of psychology to the process of rebuilding it from the scratch because the statistics became more solid, because our methods became much more scalable, etc. So that's the part of behavioral science that became a bit toxic. On the other hand, those insights that were discovered by Danny Kahneman and Amos Tversky and their students and some of the researchers that started the work before them, they are super significant. So like two deviation, standard deviations more significant than the other. So for instance, if you have million users, you will see much better, much more elegant result. If you have a thousand users, you still will have some results, but it will be much easier. The easy way to put it would be whatever build on solid research works very well. It's a question of how you operate with it. 